Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I've already been out here harvesting a whole bunch of mints and um, just really getting started on this. And this right here is the peppermint and it's just now got to the point where I can start harvesting it. And how I do it is I simply just go back. I don't go all the way down to the base. Uh, you can, but I like to leave a little bit above ground. And what's going to happen is when you when you pinch these back like that, everywhere where you've left, this is an old stock here, but like you see this one right here that I just pinched off, what's going to happen is this is going to separate and make two more. And so every time you do that, you're going to double your your uh, harvest for the next time you come out because it's it, it will grow very quickly. And so on top here is the peppermint I've been harvesting. And down here is the mojito mint. And I do have a little spearmint in there too that I harvested from the main garden bed. Uh, here's my mojito mint. And I do the same thing. You know, I've already been picking a bunch off of here, just a lot. And I mean, I could come out here and get several more colanders full of these mints. But my goal is this year is to get lots and lots and lots so that not only do I have enough dried up to last me through the year or last us through the year, but that I can also make my tea blend. And I just have one specific tea blend that I make with the mints and then put it up on my Etsy store for those that are interested because I've been getting people asking me about that. Now, however you want to blend your teas is going to be and totally up to you, really, and dependent on your needs. I like mine to have a very strong mint base because I love the flavor of mint tea or herbal infusion, as is more appropriately called. But I will also add in my lemon balm. And I've been working on this, and lemon balm is a mint. It's in the mint family. It might not taste like mint, Tastes like lemons. And it has, I still harvest it, even though I mix it together in my herbal tea blend with the peppermint, I still like to separate it out initially in case, so that I can have at least one, one jar of just plain lemon balm in case I want to use it for something different because it's going to have its own separate medicinal properties. Uh, some people even use it for headaches. I've never actually tried it for that as I've never actually tried it for anything specifically medicinal because I just I just think it's one of those herbs that's good to have and just kind of, you know, have it on a regular basis along with the peppermint. So that's all I'm going to do on the mints. I will probably come back out here and harvest some more. I've been working on the woolly lamb's ear because that's another thing. I love woolly lamb's ear tea. I will also blend some of it in with my main tea blend, but sometimes I do like to make tea with just woolly lamb's ear or woolly lamb's ear with, you know, maybe a couple of spices. Like During this time of the year, I almost always make my teas out of fresh herbs while I have them. And so taking like woolly lamb's ear and marshmallow and pansy makes a really nice herbal infusion and um, yeah so I, I like to do a lot of those different kinds of things so I'll go ahead and grab a couple of these and lay them on top of my lemon balm so anyway my goal is this year to get a lot more now if you're interested in the medicinal benefits of woolly lambs here I'll go ahead and link to the video I did last year up in the corner there so you can see that and that was just before I started drinking it as a tea. All right, well I'm back in the kitchen and I'm ready to start dehydrating up these herbs. Later in the day, I'll go out and pick some fresh herbs for making my tea for tonight. Because as I said while I was out there picking, this time of the year as the herbs are coming in fresh, I make all of my herbal infusions with fresh herbs while I have them because they're just, they have a much better flavor. But I also like to have a bunch of dehydrated herbs to last me through the whole year. Now, before I get onto this and how I wash my herbs, I want to talk a little bit about dandelion. Now, one of my favorite tea blends I'm finding is 
involves dandelion flower and I did do one the other day and it was dandelion primrose and cayenne pepper and it was really good I just it was a not the flavor I expected but I still really liked it now some people have been asking me how I keep my dandelions from turning into puffballs once once they dehydrate them they might pick them up you might pick your dandelions put them on your dehydrating trays and then when you go to check on them later they've gone to seed I've had that happen a few times and I really think there's a couple of things and I don't this is just based on my own experience I have found it best and I do this now with all of my herbs to spray them down with my own homemade vinegar I'll use any any of them that I have in my spray bottle which is usually going to be like a floral vinegar or you know an herb based vinegar and, and I just kind of work it through the herbs let it sit on there for a few minutes and then rinse them off with cool water that's all I do to wash them and I only do that really because you know some of my herbs I don't in the dandelions you know there are dogs that sometimes run loose and I don't know what they're out there peeing on and you know there's bugs and different things that get on that and it just it just helps I don't believe in over washing your herbs though because I think you can remove a lot of the good stuff the oils and stuff that are on the surface of the leaves and the flowers and I think those are really important to keep but I also find that spraying your herbs down with some vinegar first and letting it sit or even soaking it like Stacy does in a blend of vinegar and water seems to also help preserve the color which would make me think if it's preserving the color better then it's also preserving a lot of the nutrients better by doing that and I was really thrilled to see this is the first year I started doing that with my dandelion flowers and I noticed that they're retaining their color so much better and just look how nice those look these are all dehydrated and so then I think the other key thing is make sure that you pick them as soon as they first fully open up. I like to make sure they're fully open, not halfway open. And as soon as they open up, don't wait till too late in the day or the next day to pick that same dandelion. Because the older it is, the more apt it is going to be to turn into a puffball in your dehydrator. And since doing that and using the vinegar, uh, and also the third thing there's one more make sure you're dehydrating at a very low temp that's like between 95 and 105 degrees I believe if you have your dehydrator too high it's going to cause your dandelions to turn into a puffball and also too high is you're just going to lose some of your nutrients out of your herbs if you dehydrate things on too hot of a heat Air drying is an excellent way. There are a lot of people that hang their herbs upside down all over their house. I'm getting to that point in the year now where I'm going to have to start running two dehydrators at a time. But air drying is excellent if you have the space and the time for it. For me, I've got so many herbs that I'm drying. And also with me wanting to make some blends to put up on the store, I, I need to be running my dehydrators a lot. Now you can see what I have here is here is the lemon balm. Here is the woolly lambs ear. I only picked a little bit because I plan on doing a lot more like tomorrow and later on. I just picked that so I can show you how I harvest them. And then here, here is the woolly lambs ear all dried up. That's what it looks like. You can see this uh, latest batch here. I haven't packed down into there because <laughs> this is all packed in because I'll like really pack it in the jar tight. And this I just did, I dried up yesterday. And so I can really pack it down in there and fit a whole bunch more in there. And then when that jar is full, I'll start another jar. And over here are the mints that I picked. So I've got the peppermint and mostly the mojito mint, which is right there. Uh, you can tell the peppermint because the bottom of it has the purple on it, the bottom of the leaves. And then there's spearmint in here somewhere. Where's my spearmint? The spearmint is right there. It doesn't have the purple at the bottom. It's just all green. But you can tell the difference in the leaves between the mojito mint and the spearmint. The spearmint has a more smooth, rounded leaf where the mojito mint is very wrinkly and pointed. And as I've said several times, this one is my favorite for flavor, though I do really like the strength of a 
the peppermint. All right, and then one more thing I have right here. This is some sting and nettle I harvested earlier. And I'm going to show you a little video clip right here. Well, I was out harvesting my sting and nettle, and it is loaded with these little slugs. These are the culprits, believe it or not. Yes, we get big slugs here, but it's these little guys that do the most damage. And I wanted to show you guys something about my chickens. Chickens love slugs. Look at that. Okay, uh, all gone. And three chickens. Sorry, other you other guys. You didn't get any slugs. There'll be more. Trust me. They love them little slugs. And some people say their chickens don't eat slugs. And I notice these guys, when they get too big, they don't really care for them. But most of the issues I have are with them little ones. And I just feed them to the chickens and they gobble them right down. And here's the trick, is that you can when, start when they're chicks and start feeding them little slugs. And if they're kind of big, then cut them up and give them to them. It sounds pretty gross, but they will learn to eat the slugs. So yeah, I mean, ducks I know are best for slug patrol, but we don't have space to keep ducks too, so our chickens, our chickens are our slug eaters. And so... That was fun, but now you know that chickens really will, if you train them, eat slugs. Okay, and then one more thing, since I, I got the sting and nettle, I wanted to talk about with these gloves that were sent to me by a subscriber. These are the latex free, I think they're nitrile, and I am loving these. These are perfect for harvesting uh, sting and nettle and also for soap making it's been these have been working great i've been using the same pair over and over again and washing them and even if you saw in that video clip the chickens were pecking those slugs right off my hand with the glove on didn't leave a hole i mean if that was the latex ones i would have been tore all to shreds a long time ago so i'm really enjoying these and thank you you know who you are i appreciate them so much they're gonna last me forever because i'm still on the first pair now, the dehydrator of choice for me is the Nesco, and I'll go ahead and post a link to it below. I actually have three of them. I have one that I bought at an auction like 20 years ago, or maybe maybe 15 years ago it was, and it still works. The only problems I've had with it is because it is all plastic. It's now the base of it is starting to get kind of cracked and, and uh, falling apart, but it still works. The motor's still great. Everything about it is still great. And then I bought a brand new one as a backup and also to have trays a couple of years ago. I did that. And then this last year, I found another one brand new, never even been used for three bucks at a garage sale. So I actually have three that I can run. And I love them because you can stack as many trays, up to 12 trays if you want. Um, though you do need to rotate them to get a good uh, drying or at least keep removing the top tray as the things get dry. Uh, I'm sure people love the Excalibur and that it may dry quicker. I don't know. I just know that I love the Nesco. It's, it's what I've been using for a long time and it works great for me. So I'm going to be spreading my herbs and again temperature 95 to 105 degrees for your herbs. And so I'm just, all I'm going to do, I used to go through the trouble of pulling all this stuff off the stems but if I, as long, but since I have three dehydrators and I don't need to worry about the space, I just toss everything on there. And any of the woody parts, when it comes to, when these are all dry, I take the herbs and put them in a bowl like this and then just take my hands and break them up. And maybe I'll show that in another video. And then I'll just pull out the hard woody parts. But I don't mind leaving the stems in there because on all of these, there's, the stems are edible too. And so there's no sense, especially if you're using it for teas and tinctures, there's no sense in removing the stems. I just take the really hard ones out and pick them out and then use my canning funnel and fill my jars like that. Now one thing your Nesco dehydrator may not come with, depending on what one you ordered, are these clean screens. And I highly recommend them and I'll post a link to these below. Um, I have a bunch more of them. I don't know where they all are or where I put them last because I also use these ones. These are called the, the fruit leather tray or something like that. And I don't really make fruit leather myself. 
I have before and they work really good for that but I'm more likely to use these for dehydrating tomatoes or like when I made the tomato flakes and I'll go ahead and post that video right up here or link to it right up there and they're really good for that and you can also use these for your herbs. Now the clean screens do a couple of things is they help make the holes smaller so if you got little tiny things like lavender leaves or rosemary leaves that you're dehydrating you don't have to worry about them falling through but these are also good for that I just prefer the screen because it's going to allow a little more airflow for a faster dehydrating time so I'm putting on the last of my lemon balm over here and then the little bit of woolly lamb's ear that I picked and then I'll do another tray of just the sting and nettle. So I'm gonna go put these on my dehydrator. Okay, so I, these are some uh, dandelion leaves I was drying up yesterday, and before I went to bed last night, they still weren't fully dry. So I just left them in there. I don't like to leave my dehydrator running overnight since it's on solar power. I don't like to drain the batteries during the night. So I just turned it back on this morning, and these are all very dry. Look at that, full wreath. So then I just put it in a bowl and then break them up just like that and it works that just works really great to do it that way just using my fingers and again any really woody parts especially in the dandelion leaves or anything that's going to go on my mixed greens blend uh, you can add these to your tea blend if you want but my since my mixed greens blend I like to use in meals adding to gravies and meatloafs and uh, casseroles and sauces. I even put it in my spaghetti sauce. I put it in my meatballs. I put it in everything that I can put it in. That way we're just getting more of those good greens in our diet all year round. But I do try to eat as many fresh dandelions leaves as I can. I add them to our salads. I've even sauteed with them, but eating them fresh and raw is going to be the best for you. However, lots of good minerals and nutrients in these dandelion leaves. So then I take the, cur the current jar that I'm working on filling, and this one I just started yesterday because I filled up another one and vacuum sealed it. And then I just pour those in there. And then the, when I get the jar good and full, I'll pack it down really tight. Then I'll use my food saver lid and the brake bleeder method that you've seen in many other videos. I won't show you this time and bore you with it, those who've been following me for a long time. And, and uh, just vacuum seal the herbs in there and then when I'm ready to use them or put them into the full mixed greens blend, then I'll do that. The only reason I separate them out to start with, since I know I'm going to end up probably using them all in the mixed greens blend, is Part of the reason is I like to see what my ratios are, like how much dandelion leaves to how much sting and nettle to how much grape leaves, strawberry leaves, and all that, so that I just have a good idea each year what all is going in that particular blend. So if you want to see how I do that, I have a couple different videos like showing how I dehydrate them, but I also have a video that I did in the fall showing me blending them all together after our, after the whole summer and spring of collecting and dehydrating and then taking them all and making my mixed greens blend and I'll go ahead and put that right up here so you can see how I do that and also see what all I had in this in last year's blend this year's could be different the ratios could be different on how much nettle to grape leaves to strawberry leaves it just depends on how much harvesting I can keep up on on each thing and how prolific each herb is going to grow for me. I'm guessing I won't get a whole lot of strawberry leaves this year because I thinned out my strawberries quite a bit, but I do need to get busy and start harvesting some leaves here real soon. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed this video on my on harvesting and drying herbs for teas and there's a lot more coming because I have a lot more herbs that I like to use in my teas and also again more herbs I'll be talking about their medicinal benefits in future videos. All right. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.